Okay, here's part two of shooting 101. I'm gonna give you three techniques that you can use in your shooting to make things go smoother, quicker, and to make that edit much, much smoother. So the first one we're gonna talk about is one called the 10 second rule. It's very simple. When you go out to shoot, you frame up your shot using the balance, the composition, the things we talked about before, the rule of thirds, and you hit record, and you count to 10 seconds with your hands off the camera. That's important. You can't hit record and start swinging the camera around for 10 seconds because that doesn't count as a 10 second rule. You hit record, let your hands off the camera, and you use that 10 seconds to look around and see if there's something else that you want to shoot next. After 10 seconds have gone by, stop that shot, reframe that thing, put the camera on the next shot, move the tripod to somewhere else, zoom in, change that picture, and then hit record for 10 more seconds. As you do that, you'll get very fast at it, but letting it record by itself, untouched, for 10 seconds is key. The reason why we do this is because a lot of early shooters like to hit the record button and, and time passes a little differently in our minds than in real life. So they think they've got enough to work with or they think they've got a great shot and they stop it too soon. Or they keep their hands on it and they start to think about what they're looking at and say, oh, that's pretty good, but this might be better. And they zoom in. And then, oh, wait, that did, I missed it. I missed it. Back it out. Look over here. Wait. And unknowingly, we kind of fire hose the whole shot because you're moving it constantly. Taking your hands off the camera lets you focus on what else you can see with your eyes for the next shot, and it lets the camera do its job and pick up that beautiful framing that you set up and leave it there. So these are totally static shots, and that's why you get your hands off the camera. 10 seconds each shot. In editing, that shot might end up being two seconds. Might, might be five seconds. But you'll have all that you need should the time, when the time comes. Pretty simple. That's it. Boom. 10 second rule. Set up a shot, let it roll for 10 seconds, keep your hands off the camera. Let's move on to number two. Number two I call the 555 rule. 555 is a pretty simple idea that when you are doing a pan, a tilt, or a zoom, you're still making the most of those shots. Anytime you move the camera, you should still be set up to, to have a good balanced and composed shot at the beginning of the move and at the end of the move. So it's not just swinging the camera and spraying things as they call it. We don't need that. That doesn't help us for editing. Three solid shots will help us. So when I say five, 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 I'm talking about five seconds well framed on the thing that I want. Pan for five seconds. And hold for five seconds on the thing that is interesting at the end of the pan. When I get into editing, I have three shots that I can use. I can use this one from the beginning, I can use the portion in the middle where I'm moving, and I can use the portion on the end because it should be just as well framed and just as composed as the front shot. So I have three choices in my edits, not just the one. Sometimes when we say we're doing a pan or a tilt or a zoom, we hit record and just start moving the camera. It's like, that's something neat over there and that's pretty neat over there. But we don't think about it. Take time to think about it. That's why the 555 five, five kind of breaks it down in your mind and you can say, okay, well framed. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Pretty simple. Works with the zoom, works with the tilt as well. Tilt is up and down, pan is left to right, and zoom is in and out. Pretty simple. That might be on a quiz. So when you think about doing things like that, especially a zoom, you should be revealing new information. There should be, a, there should be a reason for the move. Sometimes when we do a move like that, it's just because, oh, that's nice and that's nice. But there's no reason to go from A to B. When you're using zooms or pans or tilts, there should be a reason why we're seeing something more as we zoom out or focusing in on something as we zoom in. It shouldn't be an arbitrary, hey, I'm going to make the viewer follow me from A to B. There should be a connection or a reason that we're doing one to the other, okay? For instance, if I have somebody that's maybe washing dishes and I have a really close-up shot of them washing dishes and I zoom out really slowly, I can show that they are inside of the house and we are outside of the house. So I'm revealing more information. If I have something like maybe a kayaker is heading down the river, I can hold my shot and then watch them follow them on the river for a bit and then hold my shot again as they, as they leave the frame. So have a purpose for any types of move. Unnecessary movements just cause confusion for the viewer. Give them some place to go. Take them with you, but have a reason for it. 
All right, that brings us to number three. I kind of mentioned it a little bit in the kayakers one, see if you can catch it. The in and out of frame technique. This is one we'll be practicing in class, but basically the idea of in and out of frame is that in editing, we don't do things in real time, we don't let things play out in real time, so we need to get people from A to B in as quick as amount of time as possible. So in order to do that, we need to let them leave the frame. Once they leave the frame, the viewer can then assume that they're going to come back in at a different place. It allows us to jump forward in time. For instance, if I need to walk from one place to another place, and you were to follow me with the camera the entire way, that might be a 20 second zoom to get me all the way across the yard or a parking lot into, into the building. That's a long time and you don't have time for that in, in any edit. Uh, and you probably shouldn't be making time for 20 second pans in any edit because people will lose interest quickly. So the in and out of frame allows us to get person A from, from, person, from point A to point B quicker. And like I said, we'll have an assignment to kind of work on this in class to learn that in and out of frame, but it's a really simple idea that means your subject comes into the frame and out of the frame. Goes right along with that 10 second rule where we don't touch the camera, we just set it up and the person can walk in the frame and out of the frame. They can come from around a corner, they can come through a door, none of that matters as long as they're coming in clean. We can call it a clean entrance and a clean exit. If you have a clean entrance and a clean exit, you can put any shot you want next to it in the edit and it will look just fine. If that person does not have a clean exit and they're standing in the middle of the frame and, and or not yet finished moving through the frame and we cut to the next thing and they're already in the frame in the next one, that's a jump cut. All of a sudden I was here and then the next second, next frame, I was here. So that jump cut can get kind of jarring for the viewer. So by using the in and out of frame technique, we can have our actors, our, our talents, whatever we're working with, we can have them move from one place to the other. I keep saying that it's going from you know, point A to point B, but you can use this in and out of frame technique to do other things too, like uh, getting ready to go to school in the morning and grabbing all the things you need. You can have your hand come in the frame, grab some keys, and come back out, and then, boom, your person walks through the door, clean entrance, clean exit. You can have your hand doing things where it is the subject and it comes in, does something and comes out again. So that in the edit you have choices where you can consolidate things. You can make them as long as you want or as short as you want depending on how many ins and outs you want to use. So that's number three. Let me give you another quick example. Watch this. Action. Pretty boring, right? We got to see the full action, but it took a while. See that? That was easy. Using the in and out of frame technique, we're able to get the scene covered in as much as the amount of time that we have. We don't have to wait for the camera to move or for that person to finish up their action so that we see the whole thing. We determine how long that takes in editing just by simply using the shots that work for us and having clean entrances and clean exits. All right, hopefully those three techniques will be helpful for you. Remember, the first one is a 10 second rule. Shoot and let go. Make that a shot and make it work for your edit. Second. Five, five, five. If you have to move, and you really shouldn't have to move on a lot of things, make sure you have a good composed shot at the beginning, at the end, and then that move is as short as it needs to be.
It doesn't have to be five seconds, but make it as short as it needs to be to, to get it from point A to point B. But the key is that you have three usable shots there. Third, in and out of frame technique, nice and simple. Let your subjects come in and out of the frame in most of your shots and you'll be able to piece them together really nice. It doesn't have to be a clean entrance and a clean exit every time. It may be that you have a clean entrance on one and a clean en exit on another. And as you put them together, they'll work together, but they don't have to happen in and out every time. It certainly makes things easier if you can. That's pretty much it for today. So take notes, be prepared for that quiz, rock on one and all.